At the conclusion of this lecture, you'll be able to understand the termination of employment by notice, distinguish between summary and constructive dismissal, and understand wrongful dismissal. Since most disputes between employers and employees arise on the termination of the relationship, it is often a good idea for the contract to specify the circumstances in which the employer will be entitled to terminate it without notice. For example, as a result of gross misconduct or gross negligence. Furthermore, many contracts give the employer the option of making a payment in lieu of notice and or placing the employee on garden leave during any period of notice. A garden leave clause enables the employer to require the employee not to attend work during their period of notice, but to stay at home on call. It is often used to keep an employee out of the office but away from a competitor during their period of notice. When an employment contract is terminated by the correct amount of notice, there is no breach of contract unless the contents of the notice are themselves in breach. To validly terminate a contract of employment by notice, these rules must be followed. The period of notice given must not be less than the statutory minimum, whatever the contract may specify. Section 86 of the Employment Rights Act specifies the period for different circumstances. Notice may be given without specific reason for doing so unless the contract requires otherwise. If the contract states that notice may only be given in specific circumstances, then generally it may not be given for any other reason. Dismissal can give rise to a number of different claims under UK law. The principal claims that may arise on termination of employment are wrongful dismissal, unfair dismissal, a claim for a redundancy payment, a claim arising out of failure to give written reasons for dismissal, and a claim for discrimination on the grounds of sex, race, sexual orientation, disability, religion or belief. This is where the employer dismisses an employee without notice, contrary to any notice provisions in the contract of employment. An employer may do so if an employee has committed a serious breach of conduct, for example, gross misconduct, and incur no liability for such action. If an employer has insufficient justification for such action, the employer is liable for breach of contract and the employee may claim the remedy of wrongful dismissal. See the case of Pepper v. Webb for a practical example of this issue. Normally, employees who resign deprive themselves of the right to make a claim for redundancy or other payments. Therefore, only employees who have been dismissed are entitled to bring a claim for unfair dismissal. However, if an employee resigns in response to a fundamental breach of their contract of employment by their employer, they will still be treated as having been dismissed. This is known as constructive dismissal and is found in statute at section 136 of the Employment Rights Act. To establish a constructive dismissal, the employee will need to show that the employer has committed a serious breach of contract, that they resigned in response to that breach, and that they did not waive the breach by delaying too long before resigning. Examples of breaches of contract that have led to claims of constructive dismissal Reduction in pay Complete change in the nature of the job Failure to follow prescribed disciplinary procedures Failure to provide a suitable working environment. See the case of Western Excavating Limited versus Sharp for a practical example of this issue. Wrongful dismissal is not to be confused with unfair dismissal. Here, an employee will be able to bring a claim for breach of contract, commonly known as wrongful dismissal, if their employer terminates their employment without either giving appropriate period of notice specified in their contract of employment or making a payment in lieu of notice. Alternatively, a claim for wrongful dismissal 
may be brought if the employee is employed under a fixed term contract which is terminated prior to the completion of the fixed term. This type of claim may be brought in either the common law courts, the high court or the county court, or the employment tribunal. Where the contract is silent as to the employee's entitlement to notice, the court or tribunal will imply the appropriate length of notice. Usually, this will be the same as the statutory minimum entitlement to notice, but in some example cases, relating to senior managers, it may be longer. As the action is taken for breach of contract, the courts will usually only award damages amounting to the sum that would have been earned if proper notice had been given. The wronged party is expected to mitigate his loss by, say, seeking other employment. The only defences available to the employer regarding claims of wrongful dismissal are either that proper notice of termination or payment in lieu has been given, or that the employer was entitled to dismiss the employee without any notice. The circumstances in which the employer is entitled to terminate without giving notice are sometimes set out in the contract of employment. If not, the employer will need to show that the employee's behaviour amounted to a fundamental breach of their obligations under contract. Generally, it will be necessary to show that the employee was guilty of gross misconduct or gross negligence. In conclusion, you will now be aware that a contract of employment can be terminated by a number of means. Most disputes arise after the termination of a contract, which can result in a number of claims being brought by the employee against the employer. There is a difference between summary and constructive dismissal. Summary dismissal refers to the issue of lack of notice period, whereas constructive dismissal relates to the actions of employers resulting in the resignation of the employee. Finally, wrongful dismissal should not be confused with unfair dismissal, where wrongful dismissal occurs as a result of lack of compliance with notice period.